Hey everybody, this video is going to go over some of the functions in R that are necessary to get assignment 2 done. I'm not going to talk about any of the actual statistical analysis, as that's the point of the class, and I don't want to give any spoilers on that. Uh, but this will talk about the R functions that are necessary in order to accomplish the assignment itself. Um, people were running into a few issues in assignment 1, being able to split the data set, and you need to be able to do that as well here. Uh, you also need to be able to exclude certain columns in order to run a correlation matrix, so I'll talk about how to do that as well. So here is my script. Uh, I have the script in the left-hand window here. I'll be putting the output to the console as usual. Of course, the first thing you want to do is load your psych library as you need the describe function that's part of it, and to load the data set into a data frame. Uh, data frame is the word used for the table that's stored in memory in R. And as you can see, I named mine A2 for assignment 2. And if we look at that, you can see that it has all of the columns. Here are the first six rows. Uh, so the first thing to accomplish what we want to do is to take it and break it into all of the records that the condition is AER, and another one where all of the conditions are DES. And the reason we want to do that is the assignment states that we need to have the correlations and the descriptive statistics done for each condition. So one of the things that's really useful to know in R, and this is probably worthwhile if you're going to spend a few minutes doing some extra reading, is understanding object types, specifically data frames, um, vectors, and some of the basic data types as well. There are a lot of good tutorials online. The particular one that I used was at rtutor.com. That's r-tutor.com. Uh, if you look on the right-hand side, actually, I'll throw that up on the screen here. There are some tutorials on vectors, matrices, list data types, uh, data frames, and, of course, the basic data types. If you're not a programmer, this is something that you might not have run into before and it will make a big difference in your ability to solve your own problems moving forward in R. So I definitely recommend uh, finding some understanding in that somewhere. This one worked well for me, uh, so whatever works well, uh, go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, getting back onto, uh, onto track with this, what you want to do is you want to split your data set, like I said, into your two different conditions. So what I did here is I assigned them to variables. I named them AER and DES. Uh, keep in mind that that's kind of arbitrary, just like the A2. You don't have to name them the condition. It's just an easy way to remember it. And what I did was I took the A2, and with the square brackets after it, I said, I want you to take every column, or sorry, every column um, for each row where the condition column equals AER and then again for DES. So if you don't want to sit around for the explanation, um, that's what you need to do here. This is the line of code, and it'll assign it to AER. This will assign it to DES. Uh, what it's actually doing, though, is you are asking it to look at something at a specific uh, coordinate. So if you're using Excel, it's the same as saying, OK, this is the row, and this is the column, and the cell is what intersects it. If you leave the column blank, though, it will give you every single column. So that's why I was saying by give me every column where this is true. And it creates AER and DES. And now if we look at AER, we have all 100 records and we have all of the columns from it. And the same with DES. So now you can go ahead and you can run the describe function on those. So describe AER, describe DES. Oops. And that works just fine. Uh, and then you have all of the summary statistics that you need. The issue that's going to come up with this so far is if you have um, a chance to run the correlation um, function on these initial variables, it's going to throw an error. And I'll show you how. You'll get this error here. Uh, if you, some people have gotten this far and have been wondering what to do. What they mean is x must be numeric. If you run the help function on the correlation function, it's going to show x as a placeholder for the mandatory argument of uh, the data that you're passing into it, and the data has to be numeric. If you look back at the descriptive statistics, you get um, in the condition column, you get this not a number message 
some functions, if it can't do the calculation, will return not a number or an and. Some of them will just crash, and correlation is one of them. So what you want to do, instead of having to pass in you know, each and every combination of columns to get the correlations for them, is you want to be able to pass in an entire data frame, but you don't want it to include the condition column. So what you can do is you can use these square brackets once again, and there's another way that uh, they can be used, is if you just pass them in a number, all they're going to do is return the column at that number. So if I look at AER and I say give me column 3, it's going to give me, oops, square brackets of course, slip my mind, it's going to give me every record in column 3 which in this case is pre.wm.s1. Now what we want is we want everything but column 2. And arguably we don't need column 1 either. Column 1 is just kind of an ID column. It doesn't have any useful information for us. So another way we can do this is we can say AER columns 3 through 10. And you can use the colon to specify a range. And of course the beginning and ending column are inclusive. So it's going to do everything including column 3 through column 10. And then you get this here. And up at the top we can see, okay, those are the eight variables that, um, that we were interested in for the AER set. And what I ended up doing was I just took those and I assigned them to the variables no cond AER and the same thing for no cond DES. And now, if I run the, the correlation function on them, it runs it properly because it's not trying to run it on a data type that it can't handle, in this case a text or a string data type. And that's all there really is to it. Um, understanding the data types such as data frame, vectors, lists, and the primitive data types, really, really helpful. Uh, it is a concept that if you're familiar with programming is going to be almost second nature to you, but if you're not, it could be kind of a hang up and it could make it a little overwhelming um, because you, you just won't know where to look. You don't know what they are, so you don't know what questions to ask in Google. Uh, so hopefully this is a little helpful. Um, and one last bit, you actually don't need to write all of this out. This is kind of a long form where I'm assigning the intermediary steps to variables just to show exactly what it is I'm doing. You can actually nest it all into one line for each of them. So for example, if I want to show the correlation and I just want the correlation from columns 3 through 10 of the original data set of the AER lines, I can pass in the argument for correlation A2 and for the row, the first argument here, the row is condition equals AER, and the columns are columns 3 through 10. And as you'll notice, that gives you the same result as this one here did going it the long way. If you're not familiar with it, obviously it's a lot condensed into one step, so it might be a little trickier to read. But as you get comfortable with R, putting things all into one line might be the way that you decide to do things. I hope that was helpful, and good luck.